we are. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. We're so grateful to the Lord for the privilege, not just to be alive, but the greater privilege that it ha he himself, by his determined counsel, has it, found, found it necessary to use this period to release the truth he's releasing to the body. And I want to encourage every one of us that these truths are for application. What will make the kingdom church to emerge in the air dream, the Lord is releasing through various teachers across the world. The dispensation of the gospel of the kingdom assigned to this commission, part of it is to release the issue of the fivefold. And we've done the teachings, and now we have eight more lessons that constitute what is called the epilogue series. In other words, to close out the book is a section called the epilogue series. And the first one today in course 307, the fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, is lesson 35, understanding the kingdom and the church. This is so important. They are not the same. You've got to know the difference. So let's just have a little bit of sneak peek. And that which the Lord will reveal to us, we use it to, to set a foundation for what we learn the next lesson. And then on and on until we finish the epilogue series. Let's pray. Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. Have your way and release what you propose through your spirit at work. Even now, we ask for nothing other than your mind. Let your name be exalted in Yeshua's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the, the period we are in, if there's anything, if anybody doubted the scripture, you can doubt it no more. About the times we are in, when iniquity will arise, will abound, the love of many will wax cold, where people are going to do whatever they want, where people are going to create alternative lifestyles different from the Holy Scriptures, and they will force it, they want to force it upon all. It's no longer a matter of people living the way they want. It's just that they want the way they want to live that is contrary to the world to become, you know, the in thing for everybody. Worship of Satan and his principalities have now moved from secret covens to the open. We saw some years ago the statute of Baphomet in Detroit, and then it's moving to different cities, setting the stage for some of the things the Lord said will happen in the end time. At the same time, secular humanism presented as the gospel with entrepreneurs trading in the souls of men is found in the mega Pentecostal charismatic evangelical and independent church movement. And so much is being done, so much is centered on money, making money from prophecy, everything, making money, counseling, making money. And brothers and sisters, Romans 13 is clearly unfolding before us. From verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Verse 14, But put ye on the Lord Yeshua, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the laws thereof. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to know, since the end of the age is almost clearly upon us in its fullness, we need to know something. And that is Yahweh is particular about his design for everything. Everything on earth, he has a design. And we're supposed to keep the design. Once you divert from the design, trouble comes. Take Adam and Eve, for instance. They lost the kingdom of much less bliss because they allowed a third party Satan to confuse them and activate their soul rims to be the engine of their lives contrary to how they were created for their spirit man to rule. So the soul, the sea rim of emotion, the rim of feeling, the rim of uh, the mind and you know the imagination and the memory began to take over their life. The result is they lost the kingdom in Eden. Satan became the god of this world. What of Noah? 
Noah, we also saw in the course of this study that Noah was a man who had never seen a flood before. A man who we didn't know, we don't know him to be a carpenter. The Lord said, go and build me an ark. Gave him specifications. He built the ark according to specifications and he and his family escaped. The whole world was drowned. We also saw men and brethren about Moses. The Lord gave up the old covenant. The Lord gave him the Torah to guide Israel as a schoolmaster. Moses was faithful and he gave him the description of the tabernacle of, tabernacle of witness and the ark. And Moses ensured that everything was built according to what the Lord showed him on the mountain. Men and brethren, we know also, we saw in the course of this study that Saul lost the uh, kingdom, the first king of Israel, he lost the kingdom. How and why? There was divine instruction concerning Amalek. And Elohim told him, go Amalek, because they are out of the way, I'm using you as an instrument of judgment, everything cut off, destroyed. Saul modified divine instruction, spared the flock, spared Agag, and the result, he lost the kingdom. And the Lord told him, in 1 Samuel 15, 23, use Samuel to tell him, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. And that was how he lost the kingdom. So have you said that, brothers and sisters, we need to understand the kingdom and the church, what the Lord had in mind. The divine plan of salvation required that Elohim be made flesh in Yeshua to redeem man from the power of Satan, which he procured by craftiness from Adam. Elohim then required those who receive his mercy to stop living for themselves. The life of those who are redeemed is not supposed to be about them and their comfort and their family and all that. He requires us to be vessels in his hand, just as this is a cup of warm water I need on a cold, icy day in London. We release our vessel for him to use, to do what he wants. Men and brethren, that is the plan of the Father. And the Lord planned that there will be something that will happen. Before, it was only the Jews as a people that were his people. But the Lord planned that through the sacrifice of Yeshua at the cross, he will create one new man from among the Jews and among the Gentiles. People are going to come to knowledge of him, have a relationship with him, and in that state, he will be all in all. And brothers and sisters, these people called out of the Gentiles, called out of Israel, will be called the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia. The one new man of people who are no longer living by the motions of the flesh, living by the standards of the world. They are living out his purpose in the earth dream. And that's the plan of the Lord. Go to Ephesians 2, 11 to 18. Ephesians 3, 1, all the way to verse 12. First Peter 2, now sums it up. He said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show for the presence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Elohim, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, dearly beloved. I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, take note of these two things, that every believer is supposed to be a stranger and a pilgrim. A stranger, you are no longer part of the old, the old culture, the old lifestyle, the old desires, the old priorities. You are a pilgrim. You are going here for a state of time, 90 years, 80 years, whatever time it is. That during that period of pilgrimage, you don't carry baggage, it will weigh you down. That period of pilgrimage, you have the Lord as the fulcrum of your life. And the church which was better than Pentecost is built by Yeshua and he wants it to be built according to the master plan. And the master plan he didn't give to Peter, he didn't give to John, he didn't give to any of the twelve. He gave the master plan to an enemy of the gospel, Saul of Tarsus, who he arrested on the way to uh, Damascus and in first 
Corinthians 3, 10 to 15, Paul said something, according to the grace of Elohim, which is given to me as a wise master builder. The master building, the master plan, you see it in the kind of churches that the Alpha Church had, the church at Rome, the instructions he gave about grace, the church at Corinth, the instructions he gave to them, the church at Ephesus, the church at Philippi, the church at um, Colossae, the, the instructions he gave, the church at Thess Thessalonica, everything about how to live, how to run it, how to operate it, and the Lord gave it to him. So the church is called our people. No more discrimination, neither male nor female, young nor old. Just the fact that we are redeemed by the blood, we are new creatures in him, we are his body in the earth realm that he wants to use to manifest his glory. Then what is it about the kingdom the Lord wants us to understand? The gospel of the kingdom tells us clearly in the Holy Scriptures that there are two aspects of the kingdom the Lord wants us to bear in mind. Number one is called kingdom now. Kingdom now is in this present life our conscious enthronement of Yeshua as sovereign king on the throne of our hearts. In other words, kingdom now occurs the day I consciously allow him to now become the Lord indeed, not just my savior, but also my Lord, my King. If he says, go straight, I go straight. Go right, I go right. Go left, I go left. If he says, leave all and follow me, I leave all. If he says, go to the marketplace, so I go. He takes care of everything. And that's what Yeshua was saying in Luke 17, 21. Neither shall they say, lo, here, or there, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of Elohim is within you. The kingdom is within you when you accept to be a disciple of Yeshua. This is the acid test. Many people are not willing to go. That place where you are stupid for the Lord, foolish for the Lord, you hand over everything objective about your life to him, and he takes over and uses you for his glory. First John 1 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of Elohim, even to them that believe of his name. And then in that state, what will happen? You may not have food. You may not have anything people count dearly. You may not be married. You may have children. You may have no children. You may have nothing. And those external mean nothing to you. You may have business. You may not have any. But you have something inside of you. Romans chapter 14, 17 and 18. Righteousness. Right standing with the Father. Peace. Shalom. Perfect peace even in the midst of a storm. And joy in the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status, your gender. These things show whether you have the kingdom. If they are not in you, the sense of right standing with the Father, the shalom, the peace with Him, and the joy, the Holy Spirit, if they are not there, your kingdom life is compromised. You don't need anybody to tell you. Just if your heart is filled with all manner of issues, hatred, animosity, offense, evil speaking, all those things, congest your heart it means the kingdom is now no longer inside brothers and sisters all who have yeshua enthroned in their hearts submitted to his sovereign will these ones are his kingdom church he didn't ask us to fold our hands he said in luke 19 11 to 27 occupy in verse 13 until i come we have work to do on this side of eternity we are to be instruments through which he will save others, Second Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. It is through the active engagement of saints in their communities that they are the salt and the light. Now, that's the one part, and that kingdom now has also two dimensions, within me and kingdom nation. Every believer who is living this way is part of one kingdom nation, one royal priesthood, one peculiar people. Then we have kingdom come. Kingdom come is the physical reality that will be on the earth rim when Yeshua returns. Right now he's in a far country and he says occupy. A day is coming when he's going to come down in glory. 
in the awesomeness of his power and when he comes down he's going to vanquish the armies of the antichrist that are gathered around against israel to destroy israel at the battle of Armageddon. he will lead the saints who were raptured some years earlier and they will vanquish the armies of the antichrist one angel will take satan and chain him and throw him into the bottomless pit and then yeshua will rule and reign on the earth rim the book of uh, 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 Revelation chapter 20 for a thousand years on earth. Why is it so? The 1,000 years called a millennium is to demonstrate what life would have been on the earth rim if Adam and Eve had not sinned, had not succumbed to Satan. It's going to be a time of global bliss. It's going to be a time of global righteousness. That's why Satan is locked away so that there will be no sin influence in the earth rim. And all who live on earth will see the glory of the Lord. There will be no terrorism, no tears, no war, no crisis, no bombing, no nuclear danger, nothing, no plane crash, no, 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 no sea, no, no ship sinking in the seas. It's going to be super extraordinary time. This is the desire of the ages. This is what everybody has been looking forward to. This is a real kingdom. Yeshua will sit as king of kings and lord of lords, meaning he will have kings over nations, over territories, over cities. He will have people who rule. And they are the people who right now understand the kingdom and have been totally sold out. Things may not work out for them the way you count things working out. Go and check the 12 disciples, for instance. Apart from John, none of them died a natural death. Apart from John. Can you imagine that? Why? They saw the time to come when they are going to rule with him. Oh, he promised them hundredfold. They didn't cash that check by faith. No, they chose to suffer for his name's sake, knowing that in the world to come, they have everything. And brothers and sisters, if it comes down the wire, we need to be able to esteem the things to come greater than the things for now. I mean, supposing the Lord requires you to give up everything you counted dear for his sake, you know what? You become, you deem the fool by your generation. But that's what heaven esteems highly. And so, brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to know that the kingdom is to come he does he doesn't want us to he doesn't want us to miss it that's why the lord wants us to know the church is not can never be building it cannot be religious organization or humanistic institutions we don't we can't go to church we are the church the church is the called our saints and brothers and sisters when we understand these things and live the way the lord wants us to live Matthew 5, 13 to 16 will come to pass as a salt of the earth, as a light of the world. It's through us and because of us that the world is preserved from corruption. It's preserved from premature destruction. Our prayer life, our engagement. So we are not called to live an insular, isolated life. He asks us to be separate so that we can engage with the world, not to be isolated. And brothers and sisters, it's so important that we receive these things and to know that brothers, the Lord is requiring us what he told the woman at the well of Samaria. In John 4, 21, Yeshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, said Yeshua, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Two things. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. You worship Him in spirit and also in truth. There is a truth, one truth, the truth in the Holy Scripture, the supremacy of the Father, His omniscience and omnipresence and everything He has committed to Yeshua. How much is Yeshua enthroned in your heart? What are you willing to give up to obey Him? What is it that is dear to you that you are willing, if need be, Take it. Do you know the Lord knows at the bottom of our heart at what stage can we succumb? At what stage can we give up all for Him? If He's sovereign rule of our lives, then He said we are dead. Our life is hidden with Him. We seek the things above. 
in every situation, what does the Father say? When we come here, we're ready. This lesson is to prepare us for the epilogue series. Eight lessons, seven more to come that will enable you to grasp why the fivefold is absolutely essential for restoration of Elohim's purpose. Because no fivefold, there can be a kingdom church. So anywhere you don't see the fivefold, it doesn't matter how much nice they preach, signs, wonders, miracles. If the fivefold is rejected, it's a religious church you are seeing right there. I mean, this is something that is so clear that if it's spoken to you, it seems as if it's radical. But that's the truth. And the fivefold is what Rome rejected the day Rome, the church and the Roman Empire married. The fivefold was cast out of the window. And in place was replaced a one-man show that you see today. And brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. Open your heart. To receive the seven lessons to come. And then study. If you can, take one month and have one lesson a day. Video and the lesson. You will grasp the truth about the fivefold. If you are called to it, you will accept it. And not everybody is called. There are those who will be called to the deacon. It is equally important for the work of the Lord to be done. There are those who are called to be exhorters, whichever one discover it. By way of assignment before then, will you share this video with friends and family so that they too can partake of what we are partaking so that the purpose of the Lord can be fulfilled. So by way of assignment, number one, please summarize this lesson. What did you receive generally? Two, what are the two dimensions of the kingdom, citing at least one scripture for each? Three, what new thing did you learn today? We're going to pray now. Gracious Father in heaven, the I am who I am. We just give you all praise, all glory, all adoration. Have your way and glorify Yeshua in Yeshua's name. Let Holy Spirit cause this word to bear fruit. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. And let all honor and glory be ascribed to you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Let me make a short announcement today. By 2 o'clock London time, something exciting is going to happen. The little children, the little children, I mean, from the very you know age where they can speak and they can run around and do things, and maybe primary one and two, all the way to seventeen. That that category, which is called the next generation, are going to take the service that arrives online church with our walls from beginning to end it's important you see what the lord is doing arise is not a, a denomination it the lord says a model of what i want to do so you see the postings we are doing there are many more there are 40 something ministers working together by the grace of the lord and the fivefold is operational the deaconate is operational others so the lord said i want you to put these things out so that my sins can see who are overseers of ministries how they ought to conduct don't run a church as your own it is his church and if it is his church everybody has a fundamental right to become who the lord wants them to be and there's no cap that should be placed on anyone and so you know us as the overseers, you got to know the brethren. Without them, no involvement. you got to know also those in the United States, a few of them who are part of this extraordinary work that is going on. But you know those in Europe, in Asia, in Europe, wherever they are, brothers and sisters. But today, the little children, young children are taking the service because we believe what the Lord said in First John chapter 2, 12 to 14. I write unto you, old men. I write unto you, young men. I write unto you, little children. Join us by 2 o'clock. You can be on Facebook Live, right on this uh, channel. We come, watch, and learn and apply. Give room for all categories of women in the church, male, female, young, old. That's a wonderful day. The Lord bless you and keep us all in prayer. Bye bye.